Hi, everyone, and welcome. So I'm just waiting for a few more people to join, or if anyone joins, yeah. Let's see how this turns out. Hopefully someone joins. <clears throat> oh yeah, someone joined. Hi. So I'm just letting people know, as I usually do at the beginning, that I am live. Let's see. And okay. Okay, so we will see who will join. And I hope that you are all doing well, of course. I'll just check the lighting, see if I can change anything. Let's see. Oh, maybe this one. Or let's check out the colors red, green, blue. Oh, hi, someone else is here. So happy. Oh, okay. Maybe this one. Thomas D. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Thomas. Happy to have you here. Hope you're doing good today. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just waiting for some people to join. Oof. Stand in silence. Peter, hello. Blue. Okay, then maybe blue. Let's see. Um, okay, there's blue. Well, then blue it is. I will keep the blue. And this is, you know, it's hot today, so I have my little fan. <laughs> Carl, hi, Sarah. Hi. Oh, I have a little cool wind effect going on with my hair. Yeah. Yeah, I was supposed to have this live stream one hour earlier, but uh, I was actually dyeing my hair because I haven't dyed my hair for like two months. And my mom came home from Poland today with the special hair color because... I have a hairdresser in Poland who specially mixes the special color just for me. So I had to wait two months and that is why, yeah, I just had to finish this. So I'm really happy. It looks so good. I'm so happy. Oof. But okay. Yeah, so I've picked this theme for today, which is called Based on a True Story. Um, I'm just going to show you movies that are kind of based on a true story. They could be very loosely based on something, or they could be a lot based on something very true. And if you have any movies you want to talk about in horror movies, or your own horror movies based on a true story you want to talk about, then you can do so. I will not go into the cases that specifically, maybe say a line uh, or two about it if I feel uh, doing it. Uh, <laughs> no, this was perfect. I just got home. I would have missed it. I went out go. Yeah, well, that it was meant to be. Yes. Uh, you okay? Hey, you have a huge fan. Nice. Yes. I just found it yesterday because I was thinking about this for like several months. I'm like, I do have a fan somewhere. Like, a, yeah. And then I found it yesterday. And I'm so happy. Yes. Okay, but some of you are here. So, you know. Let's start talking about horror movies. Yes. Uh, okay, fantastic. <laughs> Peter Hill, a huge fan. <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty funny. Okay, which one will we start with? Hmm. Okay, maybe a really, really good one, which was one of my favorite movies when I was growing up. And it is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, here we have the Swedish edition, I can show you. Look at this beauty, yes. And you can open it up to discs and a little booklet and the backside pictures are really awesome. Yeah, Terry McMahon in the middle, my favorite scene by far in the movie, yeah. But you know, it's based Loosely based on the Ed uh, Gein killer, yes. But I mean, this movie is just fantastic. Like, uh, I used to watch this when I was 13 or 14, like all the time. And whenever someone said that they hadn't seen a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, then I immediately uh, made them watch it. Especially that scene where Terry McMahon is uh, hung up on the meat hook. And people are like, well, you're, you're crazy. You're weird. Why are you showing this to me? I'm like, it's so good. Can't you see how good it is? People are like, no. 
<laughs> but yeah, I used to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre all the time. Yeah, this is amazing. I haven't seen it for maybe two, three years. So I think I have to rewatch it at some point, of course. But yeah, I think I will wait until I, I will review all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. <clears throat> yeah. Let's see, Carl, uh, the film that started me collecting horror films. Oh, really? Oh, that is amazing. Uh, Peter, is TCM3 worth watching? I mean, it's not really that good. It is maybe worth a watch just because it is in the series, but don't expect it to be good or anything. I, I don't really like it, but it is bad, better than uh, I think Next Generation was after that. And the third one is definitely better than that one. But I mean, it, number one and number two are definitely my favorites. And I also like the remake um, with Jessica Biel. And then I really like Texas uh, Chainsaw 3D. I know a lot of people like this, like it a lot, but I really, really like it. But yeah, I think all of us know what it is about. Um, but just in case someone might have missed it, and that is okay as well. Texas Chainsaw Mask. I would just, you know, read, uh, update you on it. Uh, where is the original one? Please. That's oh, so far down. The Texas. There we have it. Okay. Okay, so. Two siblings and three of their friends are on route to visit their grandfather's grave in Texas and fall victim to a family of cannibalistic psychopaths. Yeah. Uh, Peter, I love this huge earrings. Thank you. My mom actually got them for me from Poland. So yeah, she got a bunch of awesome earrings for me to wear in my videos. Because I think you all have uh, learned that I really like earrings. Yeah. There's probably the only jewelry I, I wear. Yeah, but yeah, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, amazing movie. But I want to talk more about them when I review them. But of course, I had to include it in a based on a true story theme, of course. Yes. But let me know if you also are big uh, fans of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And while we're uh, on a Toad Hooper theme as well, then we can talk about another movie, which was supposedly based on a true story. It is called Eaten Alive, also by Tobe Hooper. Yes, I actually had no idea that this was kind of based on a true story or loosely based on a true story before uh, doing some research today. I was a researcher and like, oh, horror movies based on true story. And then this came up I'm like, oh, really? Wow, I, yeah. Must have missed something. Uh, but let's see. Eaten Alive. A psychotic redneck who owns a dilapidated hotel in rural East Texas kills various people who upset him or his business. And he feeds their bodies to a large crocodile that he keeps as a pet in the swamp beside his hotel. Yes. So this uh, is pr practically what was going on in the base uh, on a true story, but I think the guy was working in a completely different work of line, not in a hotel. Uh, but yeah, this, uh, I haven't seen this for a long time, but I remember kind of enjoying it. I do have to rewatch it just to yeah, be able to freshen up my thoughts about it. But yeah. I really like the cover. That was probably why I bought it in the first place. And then we have the backside. Do we have any special features? Uh, no, not that I can see, unfortunately. But I have to rewatch this. Let's see, Fredrik Olsson. Hey, hey, uh, Peter, I love Life Force. Yeah, Life Force is really good. Uh, I have the Arrow edition of that movie. Uh, Peter, Eden Live is cool. The Arrow release also has a very good looking transfer. Ooh, I need to check out the Arrow release of that one. 
Definitely a release I would recommend. And yes, there's a part about the guy who was supposedly inspired by in, in the extras on the Arrow release. Okay, wow, that is cool that they do mention it in the extras. So yeah, I will definitely check out that uh, edition when I have the chance. Yes. Oh, having my San Pellegrino Limon and mint drink. It's so good, so refreshing in this heat. Yes. Okay. Now we've talked about some of Tob Hooper's movies. Let's see. Which will be the next one? Hmm. Okay. All right. Th this is a movie that I also learned is kind of based on a true story today. Had no idea. Uh, but I just kind of read it really fast, so I haven't really checked out the whole background or story. But it is The Dentist. So this was supposedly based on a dentist who was later found out to be a serial killer. So, yeah. I don't really know anything more than that. Uh, but, yeah. I, I don't know if you've killed anyone like The Dentist does in this movie or if he was a serial killer who just happened to be a dentist. Like that had really nothing to do maybe with, yeah, his uh, other profession. <laughs> yeah. But I will definitely check out the story behind this uh, based on a bit more when I have the time. But I mean, yeah, I can, if someone hasn't seen this movie, then I will read to you what it is about. So let's see, but you can kind of guess. Here we have it. Okay. Here, uh, Dr. Finestone has everything, a beautiful wife and a successful career in dentistry. But when he discovers his wife in an affair, he realizes that behind every clean white surface lies the stench of decay. Having gone insane, he enacts cruel dental torture on his patients. Yes, uh, I remember this movie when I was younger. Uh, like, I really don't like going to the dentist. Uh, it's not like a phobia or, or fear. Like, I, I go if I have to, but it's a bit uncomfortable. But uh, watching uh, these movies definitely made it even more uncomfortable. So I'm like, what if my dentist suddenly just snaps because of something like in the middle of my appointment and be like, ah, oh, I have to take it, take it out on this patient. I'm like, eh, no, please don't. Not me. Wait for the next one. No, <laughs> no, but yeah. Uh, some of these scenes are quite intense when he's you not know, having drill in someone's teeth and you're like, oh, is, is he gonna, is he gonna ruin their smile and just causing a lot of pain. And, but yeah, and the second one, I don't have a lot of memories from, but I remember it being even gorier, I think. Yeah, there were some really pretty gruesome scenes. Uh, but I, I will rewatch both of these and do a review. Just have to find a fitting theme for it. But yeah, good film, good film. At least the first one. I have to rewatch the second one to really know if that was equally good or okay or kind of bad. But yeah, I mean, we have some gruesome pictures here in the back. If you can see, yeah, don't really see, but I can recommend you watching the first one at least if you haven't. So let's see. Oh, it's directed by Brian Usna also. Yeah. So you know that this one will be good. You know, the, uh, from the makers of Reanimator. Yeah. And this is a Swedish uh, edition. And it's called Tandläkaren in Swedish. That's the dentist. Uh, let's see, Poltergeist. Yeah, Poltergeist is really, really good. Yeah, really like Poltergeist. I have to rewatch it, definitely. Uh, PR Puerto Rico movie wax. Hi. Uh, what have you picked up for this? Uh, what have you picked up for this week? Uh, well, I have a lot of movies here that are based on a true story, more or less. So we talked about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, Eaten Alive, and now The Dentist. So we can, and you can also chime in with any horror movie you want to talk about. And if you have a horror movie that is kind of based on a true story, you can talk about that one as well. 
Nice. Yes, I think so too, actually. So which one will we, yeah. Maybe a really, really good classic. So we have Scream. Yes, this was actually uh, kind of inspired by a killer who killed, I think, five college students or something like that with a knife. Yes. And I think we all are familiar with the Scream movie. So, but if you haven't seen it, then I will, of course, read what it is about. Uh, Scream. So, a year after the murder of her mother, a teenage girl is terrorized by a new killer who targets the girl and her friends by using horror films as a part of a deadly game. Yes, I mean, Scream is such a classic. Uh, it was the movie that really got me into slasher movies uh, after I saw Scream. I mean, I saw Halloween when I was six years old, but I, I had no concept of slasher movies, what it really was or horror. But Scream was definitely the movie that really got me into this slasher genre. I, I really liked that format. I liked that kind of storyline. I liked the gore and creative kills and just usually the twist was a very, very big thing for me. I really liked the, the twist and to see who was the killer, the background, why, it was very entertaining. And, but I mean, Scream is, yeah, one of my favorite movies, definitely. Yes, so, so good. But unfortunately, this doesn't have a lot of extras. It's kind of a boring copy, to be honest. But I bought this when I was so young. And like every movie I bought on DVD kind of looked like this. Not really any extra material or yeah, nothing special about it. I just wanted to have the movie so I could watch them, basically. And they were quite cheap. But Scream, such a classic, yes. I even got a hand of, uh, or a hold of the original Scream copy uh, of the screen, uh, script, yeah, so the screenplay. I, yeah, I was so obsessed with Scream, I just had to read and know all about it and I managed to find the screenplay and I read it. I'm like, oh, this is really, really cool. So there was some stuff that didn't make the uh, the final cut. I don't really remember what it was. I just remember when I uh, was reading it, I was like, oh, this, cool. Uh, so let's see, I just looked through Tobe Hooper's filmog filmography on IMDb. I had completely forgot he made the old Salem's Lot. I love that one. Ooh, I haven't seen Salem's Lot in such a long time. So I barely remember anything from it, but I do remember liking it, but I have to rewatch it. And uh, Scream is awesome. Yeah, it's so good. And I will definitely review all of them. I'm just waiting for uh, the next one to be released next year. So I'm really super excited about uh, Screen 5. Yeah. Okay. Which one, which based on a true story will we talk about next? Maybe this one. Yeah. So this was one of the movies that I got last week that I showed you. And it is The Town That Dreaded Sundown. Yes. So this is completely based on a true story. Uh, it's based on the murders in Texarkana made by the Phantom Killer. And he hasn't been caught yet. So this is an unsolved case. I think it, it was, was it from 46? Uh, let's see. The Town That Dreaded, uh, let's see. The story of a hooded berserk killer who terrorized the border town of Texarkana, Arkansas in 1946, leaving no fewer than five murder victims in his wake. He was never caught, based on one of America's most baffling murder cases. Yes. So I I think I actually saw the mo this movie before I even read about the uh, what is based on. And then afterwards, I read all about it because I was so fascinated and interested that he that it's unsolved, basically. And this movie also has a remake, which is also pretty good, in my opinion. But the, the original is really good. So if you haven't seen it, then I really urge you to do it. And as I said before, uh, when I showed you uh, this movie, that this one is uncensored. So it features... Uh, 
plus two and a half minutes in four scenes. So it's really good. But uh, yeah, I can't see any other extras, but I will definitely rewatch it as soon as I can. Uh, let's see. Peter's Queen is a modern classic. I also like part two and three. Four, maybe not quite as much. Uh, the UK Screen Trilogy on Blu-ray is good. It's got a bit of extras and isn't too expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I will definitely upgrade my uh, Scream um, additions to Blu-ray when I have the chance and the fund. And hey, people, you've got to write a bit more here. Yeah, please, write as much as you want. Yes, we're here to talk about, you know, horror movies. So let's all talk about them. Yeah, because sometimes I'm like, I don't even know what I'm going to say. And I'm like, well, <laughs> so you all help me out a lot. It feels like we're having a conversation. Yes, but I re recommend this one. And also, I recommend you to read about the case in case you are interested in true crime especially, you know, serial killers and things like that, and unsolved cold cases. So that was a really, really good movie. I have to drink some more. Ah, oh, so good. Okay. And uh, let's see. Hmm. Maybe something a little spooky. Yes, so let's move on to the Amityville. And this is a Swedish edition, so it's called Huset som Gud glömde. And yeah, I think this is a pretty famous uh, supernatural case. And you know, uh, it was about the, what was his name? Let's see. Uh, the Amityville. Oh, I can't even write, yeah. There we have it. So the movie is about uh, newlyweds and their three kids move into a large house where a mass murder was committed. And that is true. They start to experience strange, inexplicable manifestations which have strong effects on everyone living or visiting the house. So a mass murder occurred in the house that uh, I think that it is the Lutz family that moved in. And before they moved in, the mass murder occurred where uh, a man murdered his entire family, shot them to death, and then claimed that there was an entity or something or a demon, something in the basement, which kind of possessed him and made him, uh, him do it. Yes. And then the Lutz family moves in and they experience some supernatural scary things themselves. So this was a a very uh, discussed case, mostly because uh, the guy who killed his family said that he was possessed. Uh, yeah. And I think people like went to the basement and, and to see like, is there really something going on there? And they kind of found like some strange things. So I can't really, you know, say that uh, everything is based on a true story because, you know, with the demons and, and the ghost, you, we don't really know. But he did kill his family. That that is completely true. Uh, so let's see, Peter. I've got a bunch of Studio S stuff too. Yeah, me too. I have so much from Studio S and Utah Films. Yeah, but I, I I like their editions, most of them. But yeah, let's see, Carl. I got the Amityville Horror Blu-ray Steelbook a few days ago. Good film. Second one slightly better. Yeah, it is a very good film. And I thought the remake was okay. It was okay in my opinion. But I haven't seen the original or the remake in such a long time. But I do remember the case very well because uh, I think I came across it on a true crime uh, YouTube channel that discussed this case fairly recently. Ah, okay. Peter asking if Carl, are you much into steelbooks? Well, I myself, uh, I like steel books, but I haven't got a lot, a lot of them. Uh, because usually, uh, I, I used to buy a lot of steel books before, but usually I found them to be a bit uh, expensive, but maybe they are cheaper now. Carl, yes, very much so. Oh, nice. Uh, how big is your steel book collection? We have to ask. Of course, yes. 
Okay. So let's, okay. I will, I know what we will talk about. Beautiful. Cool. It's always fun collecting stuff. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, so now, now we have Wolf Creek. So this movie is actually based on two serial killers. Uh, first one is Ivan Milat, and then we had a second one. I can't remember his name properly, uh, but let's see. Uh, where do we have Wolf Creek? Because I have a list here where it says actually the fiction in the movie and then the facts. So that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Is it here? Okay. But I will, in case, read what it's about in case you haven't seen Wolf Creek. Let's see. Mm -hmm. There we have it. So, three backpackers travel into the Australian outback only to find themselves stranded at Wolf Creek Crater. Once there, they are encountered by a bushman, Mick Taylor, who offers them a ride back to his place. But little do the, do the three know that their adventure into the outback would be a complete nightmare after the backpackers find a way to escape. Yes. So as I said, this movie is based on two serial killers and yeah, kind of how they operated, but they, they were not working together, like separate, but they had like uh, woven in like, yeah, uh, what uh, Milat did and what the other did, like combining it into this movie. So it is uh, pretty horrifying and kind of brutal in a lot of places. So I do recommend you to watch this and to also look up the case or cases if you're interested in this kind of topics. See, Carl, I got all the Blu-ray Arrow limited edition sets. So moved on to Steelbooks, need a better income now. Yeah, yeah, I figured they were a bit more expensive, but they are gorgeous though. But yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, and this is just a simple edition, like with the screen. Uh, it's kind of identical, actually. Nothing special here, but the movie is pretty special. And also, the second one, uh, Wolf Creek 2, is really good as well. And it is really, really gory and brutal. And also, the TV show, uh, Wolf Creek, is really good as well, both seasons. Yeah, I really, really like it. But yeah, I remember watching this case uh, or cases on like Discovery Channel and it just horrified me. It was completely, yeah. Uh, oh, Ooh, Abby, my cat. Hello, JD. No? No, okay. Oh, I wish you could just come here. JD, please. No? Okay. I will leave her alone to do her evil bidding probably planning something evil. Peter, I don't collect Studio S the same way I collect Arrow, Eureka, and so on, but I've still got a bunch of cool ones I found cheap. Yeah. No, I, uh, I'm i with you there. It's not like I intentionally go and buy like, oh, I have to have all of the Studio S releases, but uh, they do release their stuff through Disc Shop and Serion and Ginza. Uh, so when I buy stuff from that website, a lot of those uh, editions come from Studio S and Utah Films. So yeah, um, it's cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, we can talk about this one. I don't think a lot of people have talked about this movie actually. And it is Borderland. Yes. So this is uh, based on a true story. And I will read what it is about. So we have... There we have it. Three college students, Phil, Ed, and Henry, 
may take a road trip to Mexico for a week of drinking and carefree fun, only to have Phil find himself a captive of a group of satanic Mex Mexican drug smugglers who kill tourists and whom are looking for a group of a new ones to prepare for a sacrifice. Yeah. So a lot of things that happen in, happen in this movie really happened uh, in true life, which is quite horrifying. But I would also recommend you to watch the movie. I actually find it found it to be very good. And I know I have, let's see, in Borderland. There we have it. Based on a real cult leader, Adolfo de Jesus Constanzo, this movie has gory details of how human sacrifice was practiced by the cult. Yes. And then they spoil some of the stuff and they're like, and you can watch all of that in this movie. Yes. So if you're interested in kind of cults and sacrifice and stuff like that, uh, then check out Borderland. Yeah, I remember it had like a few scenes that were like, mm -hmm. Uh, that's quite nice. <laughs> and let's see. Uh, and this was part of the series called Eight Films to Die For. Yeah, they released like eight films, kind of a package. And let's see. Includes mm, Miss Horror Fest Contest webisodes. Okay, I haven't even checked that out. <laughs> I don't know. And bonus features. Rituals de Sangre. Oh, the true story behind the cult murder investigation. Audio commentary with director Zev Berman, actor Brian Priestley, director of photography Scott Kevin, and producer Lauren Mose. Inside Zev's head, a filmmaker's diary, 16.9 widescreen, 5.1 Dolby digital audio, English and Spanish subtitles, and English closed captions. See, Peter, or you could try and buy every copy in the world of the Scarlet Box. Uh, Peter picked up a second copy of Studio S DVD of Showgirls the other day, uh, although I already had it. That film is awesome. I love <laughs> Paul Verhoeven. Oh, I haven't seen that film, that film in such a long time, but I remember not really, really liking it the first time I saw it. But a, a lot of people like really love the film or really hate the film, but I, I didn't hate or love it. I'm just, mm. from what I remember, it was a long time ago. Yeah. But as I said, I had a little, oh, yeah. and here you can see the movies <laughs> that were dropped in like two seasons. Yeah. Some of them were quite good. Some of them were a bit awful and some of them were okay. But this was definitely one of the be uh, better ones in my opinion. So Borderland, yes. If you hear something in the background, it's my cat playing with her toy. Uh, Carl, not many horror films get to me, but the fourth kind of unsettles me. I struggle to watch it on my own. Yeah, I remember watching it when it first came out, and I thought I thought it was good actually, uh, but I can't really remember. Was it based on a true story or? Am I just imagining it? Or was this like loosely based on something? Uh, I don't remember if it was or if it wasn't. But uh, I think it was a good film actually. Yeah. Have to rewatch it, I have it on Blu-ray. Uh, so let's see. Okay, we can talk about a really, really disturbing movie based on a really, really disturbing case. Based on, and then it's also, uh, it's a book, a written book, and it's also very, very disturbing. Because first it came the case, then came the book, and then came the movie. Yeah. And it is The Girl Next Door. So don't confuse this with the comedy movie, The Girl Next Door. This is a really horrifying and really, really sad movie. So I will read what it is about. And I would say you can go and, you know, read about this case, uh, if you like true crime, but it is just so horrific, so sad, that I don't know if I recommend you to even do that, yeah. The girl next door. <laughs> okay. 
In a quiet suburban town in the summer of 1958, two recently orphaned sisters, Meg and disabled Susan, are placed in the care of their mentally unstable aunt, Ruth. But Ruth's depraved sense of discipline will soon lead to unspeakable acts of abuse and torture that involves her young sons, Willie, Ralphie, and Donnie, the neighborhood children, and one 12 year old boy, David, whose life will be changed forever. Yes. So this is the uh, based on the true crime uh, on, I think her name was uh, Sylvia Banshevsky. Uh, and she abused and tortured uh, a young girl, uh, I think she was 12, uh, for months, like locking her up in the basement and like even making everyone in the neighborhood, every kid participate in this abuse, which ultimately led to her death. And that is, that is the things they did. It was just very horrifying. And the movie is equally horrifying to watch. It is a movie that I will probably never, ever watch again. It was just too hard. And also, I read the book, and I will never, ever read the book again. Yeah. But if you still want to learn more about this case, you can, of course, Google it. Just beware. It's very tough to read. And yeah, But yeah, if you haven't seen this film then I think you should watch this at least once, yeah. So, The Girl Next Door. Yeah. This makes me kind of sad just, just looking and talking about it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ooh, and I haven't gotten around to watching all those arrows I mentioned last time. I'm going to finish watching The Towering Inferno after this stream. Ooh, let's see. Towering Inferno. The Towering Inferno. I don't think I... No, I haven't seen it, actually. Nice. It looks really nice. Um at the opening party of a colossal but poorly constructed office building, a massive fire breaks out that threatens to destroy the tower and everyone in it. Okay, I've added it to my watch list, so I will definitely check this out. Well, that's awesome to have new movies to see. Uh, let's see. Uh, I maybe need to try and warm up uh, to all these newer horror films you're, <laughs> you're always introducing us to. I never watch something new. Yeah, I, I've i been having like the opposite problem. I always watch something new. Like before, I, I never rewatch stuff. I just saw something once and then I move on to something new because I always wanted to, you know, be able to get 10,000 movies watched in my life. And now I'm there and I rewatch so many things. Since I started with uh, this channel and reviewing movies, I have never rewatched so much movies in my life that I'm doing right now. Always rewatching things. Uh, but I'm trying to watch new stuff as well. And I am, but not as much as I used to. So I'm just rewatching things all the time right now. So it feels weird, but it's also so nice to rewatch stuff because because I'm like, oh, I barely remembered anything from it. Um, I'm so glad glad to have rewatched this. I'm just looking at my cat. Oh, so cute. Okay, I have to fan myself a bit before uh, continuing on with the movies. Whew. But yeah, if you have any more movies you want to talk about, just you know, write it write it in the comments. Uh, it's a 70s disaster movie. Yeah, I just uh, uh, read what it's about and added it to my watch list. So I will definitely check check it out when I have the chance. This looks really good in the blue light. Yeah. Okay. So I have a lot of like supernatural things left. And um, what will we choose? Okay. The Possession. 
So this is a, a movie that I actually really like. I was surprised at how, how good I thought it was. I thought it would be like horrible, but I ended up liking it a lot. So I will of course read what it is all about. And uh, let's see, the possession. A young girl buys an antique box at a yard sale, unaware that inside the collectible lives a malicious ancient spirit. The girl's father teams with his ex-wife to find a way to end the curse upon their child. Yes, so as I said, that was a lot better than I expected it to be. And I also know, I also don't know what is true and what really isn't. It's kind of hard with, you know, supernatural movies to, when it's based on a true story, it's like, well, it's kind of, some of it might, of course, be true. And then some of it are, you know, people telling them, I've, I saw this, that goes to this and, Peter, yeah, Towering Inferno is two hours, 44 minutes long, and I've watched the first two. It's good. I can definitely recommend it, even though I haven't yet finished it. Wow. But why did you only see the first two? Was it because you had to do something else and you, you just didn't have time to finish or you wanted to finish it at another time? Or are, are you going to rewatch the whole thing from the beginning or just those 44 minutes left? Because sometimes uh, when you don't have time to finish a movie, you kind of, depending on how long it was since you watched the movie, you kind of just want to rewatch everything again, even the parts you've already seen. And sometimes you're like, I'm good. I remember almost everything. I can just, you know, continue watching the rest. But yes, as I said, the possession, uh, really good. So especially if you like supernatural movies or uh, demons or haunting or spirits, then I really recommend you watching The Possession. Okay. Then we have The Haunting in Connecticut. I haven't seen this one for a long time, but I think I, I thought it was okay. Uh, but yeah. I will, when I do like a supernatural theme or hauntings or yeah, whatever, I will definitely rewatch this one. So let's see, the haunting in Connecticut. Okay. When the Campbell family moves to upstate Connecticut, they soon learn that their charming Victorian home has a disturbing history. Not only was the house a transformed funeral parlor, parlor where inconceivable acts occurred, but the owner's clairvoyant son, Jonah, served as a demonic messenger, providing a gateway, gateway for spiritual entities to cross over. Yes. Uh, oh, Brevin. Hi, Brevin. Uh, the Haunting in Connecticut. I saw only once as a kid, and it did creep me out, and I haven't watched it in years. Yeah, I haven't seen it for a long time, so I don't really remember a lot from it. And, you know, it says it's based on a true story, but uh, yet, yet again with, you know, hauntings, we don't really know what is true and what is not true, but, yeah. Uh, Peter, no, I just got too tired. Oh, yeah, that, that happens sometimes. You're just so tired that, you know, you just can't finish the movie. Uh, Peter, I always have time. Well, that's good. Brevin's Flicks and Games. Good thing I caught the stream uh, this during my break. Oh, how long is your break? Uh, I try to mostly watch films in one sitting usually. Yeah, I try to do that as well. Because sometimes when, when I have to finish it later, it kind of disrupts my concentration of that film. Uh, oh, 30 minutes. Okay. Well, happy to have you here during your break. <laughs> We've oh, talked a lot about, uh, you know, horror movies based on a true story or more or less based on true stories. 
So I only have a few left, but if you have some of your own you want to talk about, then please do so. Carla, fire in the sky and the entity are good ones. Yeah, fire. I recently just saw fire in the sky because I, uh, I saw that picture from the abduction, that famous alien picture. And I was like, this looks interesting. And then I read about, about it that is based on a true story. And then I saw the film and it has like probably the best alien abduction uh, operating whatever uh, scene that I've ever seen. It was quite creepy that scene actually. And the movie was very good. So I was really happy that I saw it. I'm happy that you brought it up actually. Uh, Brevin, what's your favorite uh, psychological thriller? For me, it's The Silence of the Lambs. Well, Silence of the Lambs is really, really good. So that, that one is definitely one of my favorites as well. Uh, I used to watch that movie like all the time when I was younger, but I haven't rewatched it for a while. DJ Drysday, hi. Uh, they also did a bad sequel to Haunting in Connecticut. That had nothing to do with Connecticut, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I, I don't think... I, I know about the sequel. I'm not sure if I've seen it or not. I'm just going to check my letterbox real quickly. Uh, let's see. The Haunting in Connecticut 2. Yeah, okay, yeah, I've seen it. Now I remember the cover, and it wasn't good at all. Yeah, but the first one, I will see what kind of rating I gave it. The Haunting in Connecticut... Okay, it got a three out of five. So it's an oh, it's an all, all right movie. Yeah. Uh, Peter, Silence of the Lambs is very good. I also like 80s Manhunter. Yeah, Manhunter is really good as well. Uh, Brevin, the first two Conjuring films are great. I just wish the third was as good as them, but I just thought it was okay. Yeah, the first two are really, really good, really well made. Uh, but the third one was just kind of a disappointment. Yeah. But I had a feeling that it wouldn't be as good as the first two. And unfortunately, it wasn't. It just didn't have the same feeling. I mean, the actors did a really good job, as always. So I'm not blaming them at all. It was just the story could have been presented in a different way, like the editing. And just, yeah. Uh, Peter, I think I had the possession on Blu-ray a few months ago, but traded it in somewhere without having watched it. I'll try and pick it up again. Yeah, you should have at least watched it, maybe given it a chance. But I mean, I understand if you wouldn't have liked it, but hopefully you will watch it at least someday. And hopefully you will like it. Yeah, I did. I saw it in the cinema and I was like, wow, this was a lot better than expected. Wow, okay. Yeah. Ooh, JD, hi. Oh, yes, hello. Yeah, she's just eating. But Carl mentioned the entity, so you know, we can talk about it right here. So this is a kind of supernatural um, ghost movie, but it, it is a unique one. So, uh, let's see. The entity. So it's from 1982. And, okay. As if struggling to make ends meet and trying to get her life back on track wasn't enough, the hardworking single mother of three Carla Moran finds herself with the back to the wall when she comes face to face with an inexplicable supernatural incident. Uh, sexually assaulted in her locked up home, Carla is having a hard time telling the difference between fact and fantasy. However, both the unseen assailant and the painful bruises in hard to reach parts of her body are very real. Uh, yeah, so I think this was a really talked about case back when it happened. And I really think the movie is really good. As I said, it's a very unique story, very unique uh, supernatural story, but I can only imagine it was very, very uh, horrifying to go through uh, that. But yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it stars Barbara Hershey, uh, you know, the uh, mother uh, in Insidious, uh, Josh's mother. 
I think his name was Josh, Patrick Wilson's character's mother. And yeah, I think she does a really fantastic performance in this one. Yeah. Uh, Brevin, normally there's a 50-50 chance of great trilogies, yeah. Uh, Peter, I have or still have the Possessed Arrow video, but that's a whole other film, yeah. The way the film is shot looks very cool, yeah. Brevin, normally we have like demon possession movies almost every year, and most would suck because they tried to hit the mark like The Exorcist back in 1973. Yeah, I mean, a lot of... Uh, possession movies are really, really, really bad. Uh, but it is hard to make a really good uh, supernatural ghost movie. It's just this, because a lot of them, they rely on kind of jump scares, kind of very predictable jump scares, instead of building up this kind of creepy atmosphere. So it's too bad. But then there are a few that still manages to do something really good. Carl, very tense scenes in the entity. Yeah, I was really surprised when I first saw uh, the entity and how good it was. Uh, Peter, cool. I got the Eureka release of the entity a while ago, but still haven't watched it. Everyone says it's great. Yeah, I think you should definitely watch it. Uh, I think when I first saw it, I had no idea that it was based on a true story. So I was just watching it, and then afterwards, uh, I read some more about it, and then I found out, I was like, what? This is crazy. I'm like, wow, okay, yeah. But yeah, please do yourselves a favor and watch the entity. Let's see, special features on this DVD. Theatrical trailer, scene access, interactive menus. Okay, so not a lot, but something. Okay, so Brevin mentioned the Exorcist, so of course, we have to talk about it. Okay, so here we have the Swedish uh, edition of Exorcisten, the Exorcist. Yes, and this it says the version that we've never seen before. But yeah, I think all of us know exactly what the Exorcist is about. But you know, I like reading what movies are about, so I will do that as well. Let's see. Okay. A visiting actress in Washington, D.C. notices dramatic and dangerous changes in the behavior and physical makeup of her 12-year-old daughter. Meanwhile, a young priest at nearby Georgetown University begins to doubt his faith while dealing with his mother's terminal sickness. And bookending the story, a frail elderly priest recognizes the necessity for a showdown with an old demonic enemy. Yeah, I mean, even the description sounds really, really awesome. And that is a really awesome movie. I've seen this one so many times. And I've also read the book, which I think is really good as well. But The Exorcist is just such a classic movie. And I also noticed, speaking of uh, Conjuring 3, that they did an homage uh, with this scene. Uh, in The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. So that was actually one of the few things that I liked about this film. I was like, ah, oh, they are doing an homage for The Exorcist. But a lot of movies have, <laughs> have done that as well. Let's see, Brevin, I haven't watched The Entity. I check it out for my next Halloween special. Yes, please do. Please watch The Entity. I am dying to know uh, your thoughts about the movie. And hopefully you will like the movie. Uh, Peter, speaking of Exorcist, I think I'm going to order Witchcraft from 88 Films starring Linda Blair and David Hasselhoff. Yeah, I remember uh, seeing that movie, but I have to see my score. I'm not sure if I like the movie. Let's see. Um, witchcraft. Hmm. Okay. According uh, to the score I gave it, I thought it was okay. So, but I, I do have to rewatch it uh, it's just to, you know, give you a fair review. But please go ahead and watch it and let me know your thoughts about the witchcraft. Bevan, I have a steelbook of The Exorcist. 
and is awarded the addition to my collection. Ooh, that is really nice. I wish I'd had a steel book of the Exorcist as well. Uh, Dennis Ribbenkow, shalom. Hi, Dennis. Uh, Peter, I have a parody movie of the Exorcist. Yes, starring Linda Blair. Yeah, I've seen it. It's really good. Uh, I think it's called uh, Repossessed. Uh, let's see. I saw it a while back. I thought it was such an amazing idea. Uh, let's see, repossessed. Yes. It's been some time since Father Jebediah, uh, my exorcist, the devil from little Nancy Aglet. But now Nancy has grown up and has a family. The demon returns and repossesses Nancy. With Father May unwilling to help, Father Luke Brophy tries his best to help Nancy, even when TV's Ernest Weller plans to air the exorcism line on TV. I really enjoyed that uh, parody. It was fun, you know, that Linda Blair played that part. And it was just fun of her to do something like that. I thought the idea for uh, Repossessed was fantastic. Uh, Brevin, the best horror films from the 70s, in my opinion, The Exorcist, Carrie, Halloween, The Omen, Dawn of the Dead, and Alien. Yeah, I mean, all of them are really, really good and, and classics. So they are definitely amazing. Peter, or wait, I think she's in it, but I might be wrong. No, no, she, she, she's in it. She is in it. Yes. So you are not wrong at all. Uh, Carl, I got the US Blu-ray Digibook release of The Exorcist. Didn't like the Steelbook. Okay. How is the D Digibook? Is it good? Just going to refresh. <sighs> so good. Okay. But yeah, I mean, this movie, such a classic. So good. And I'm glad I read the book also. Yeah, I really like the book. I borrowed it from my friend Jasmine. Oh, extra material, interactive menus, uh, theatrical trailer, commentary by William Fredkin, TV spots, most electrifying, scariest ever, returns, never seen, radio spots, the devil himself, our deepest fears. Okay, so a few uh, extra material, but not a lot. But I think I will definitely upgrade it to some Blu-ray Blu version, definitely, in the future. Uh, okay, so one uh, based on a true story movie left, in my pile at least. And that is also one classic. It is The Hills Have Eyes. And this one is based on the Shawnee Bean story. Yeah, pretty famous case. So I will of course read to you what it is about. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. A family going to California accidentally goes through an air testing range closed to the public. They crash and are stranded in a desert. They are being stalked by a group of people which uh, have not emerged into modern times. Yes. And I also reviewed this movie when I had my original versus remake theme back in March. So I reviewed the original and then the remake, of course. And I think they are like both equally good, really good. Yeah. So let's see. Um, Peter, cool. I'm going to have to dig out that DVD. I have a repossessed. Yes, I think you should. Uh, Brevin, I didn't watch The Omen until earlier this year. And after watching it, I thought it was a good horror classic. Had some of the best that deaths in a horror film. It's beautiful shot. Yeah, I agree with you, Brevin. Yeah, especially about uh, the death scenes. They were really, really good and really creative. Uh, uh, Lena Shaw, hi. Uh, the best based on a true story movie is for me the Tom the Dreaded Sundown. Yes, uh, we talked about it quite early in this live stream, but yeah, it's really good, especially the original. I, I thought the remake was good as well, but I think it was the case that most fascinated me 
uh, with the murders in Texarkana, Arkansas, uh, and that he was never caught. And I always searching for more documentaries about that case. I watch as much as I can find them online about that case. But yeah, I wish they had, they would like release, like they do on Netflix, you know, with this uh, specials, like four hour specials. Yeah, I wish that they would do it on the Texarkana murders, even though he wasn't caught, yeah. Uh, Carl, The Haunted, 1991, is a good film. Made on a cheap budget, but this made it feel more intense, worth a watch. Yeah, sometimes movies made on a cheaper budget just makes everything feel more kind of raw and intense. So, but uh, let me see if I've seen it or not. I can't really say I uh, recognize uh, the title or year, but let's see. The Haunted. Oh, now my cat is on the table. Wreaking havoc. Ah, here it is, okay. Uh, when the Smurl family moves into a duplex, they found out it's haunted. Y yeah, okay. It's added to my watch list. I don't think I've seen this, no. But thank you for that tip. I will definitely check it out when I have the chance. Uh, Brevin, the score by Jerry Goldsmith, which won an Academy Award, is very haunting. And in the opening set, the tone and the acting is great. Uh, rest in peace, Richard Donner. Yeah, no, I agree. And I'm really impressed that you know so much about uh, who has won and what has won an Academy Award. It's really impressive, actually. Good job, Reverend. Peter, cool. I have that same DVD of The Hills Have Eyes. I won it in a horror quiz. Oh, that is very cool. So congratulations to you winning it in a horror quiz. Uh, let's see if I, I think I, did I order the arrow version uh, of the Hills of Ice this time? I will check. I'm pretty sure I did, or was it the last house on the left? Uh, let's see. Um, not there. Hmm. Maybe I just imagined it. No. Okay, probably I probably put it into my basket and then I had to delete it because, you know, I can't buy everything. Uh, let's see. Uh, Peter, I saw some stuff about a film called The Ugly a while ago. It seemed interesting. Okay. I recognize the title. Uh, let's see the cover. The Ugly. Ooh. I think you're talking about the one from 97. Yeah, I, I recognize the cover as well. Let's see. Uh, Simon is a confessed serial killer who spent the last five years in a mental hospital because of his state. Dr. Karen Shoemaker wants to get through to him and starts visiting him in the hospital. And his previous life comes to us in flashbacks. I think I've seen this movie. I have to, you know, check it out, of course. Uh, let's see. Um, no. Uh, always pressing the wrong button on my phone. Okay. Yes, I've seen it. And I gave it a 7 out of 10. So it is a movie worth watching, definitely. So I think you should watch The Ugly. Yes. Uh, Matt Jordan. Uh, hi, sorry, I just got way into work and writing. Hi, Matt, you don't have to apologize. You know, I know life gets in the way, you have stuff to do. I'm just happy that you're here for a second at least. Yes, so thank you, Matt, for joining. Revan, it's great to see some directors go from horror uh, to the superhero genre like Richard Donner, Sam Raimi, James Gunn, Zack Snyder, and Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, and also Taika Waititi, who made What We Do in Shadows, and then he made Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, so, and you know, also Jojo Rabbit, which won an Academy Award for Best Screenplay. Uh, but yeah, it's really good to see that uh, both like horror directors can go into the more mainstream genre, so to speak, and uh, do like superhero movies, and that will help uh, them, you know, people will watch their earlier works like their horror stuff and yeah so it's really good i think so as well it's good to be versatile 
Definitely. Okay. So the, so I, yeah, I've gone through my pile. So here it is. Yeah. I had a few more that I could have thrown in there, but as I said, uh, I'm thinking about doing like a talking about supernatural ghost movies in a live stream. So I wanted to wait with a few more of those uh, until then. Let's see. Peter, yeah, and there's a horror film uh, club in Gothenburg called Theater of Blood. The screens films and holds a quiz once a month. I think they're about to start having new nights soon. It's a nice horror film club. Oh, it sounds really, really awesome. I think uh, we should have more of those kind of things here in Sweden, definitely. Yeah. Because uh, I use I, I work for the Monster Film Festival, and we always have a yearly quiz uh, when we open the festival, and the quiz is really amazing uh, and really fun. Before I started working there, uh, I was always you know partaking in the quiz. Sometimes I won stuff, uh, but now you know I'm not partaking in the quiz because I I'm on the inside now. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm like, what? I can't win movies. What? <laughs> Let's see. Carl, uh, was it open water based on a true story? Yes, it was. I love shark films, apart from the obvious one. Uh, I love The Shallows. The Shallows is really good, but let's talk some more about open water. Because uh, that was actually on the list, but I don't have it in my collection. So, uh, But I have seen it, so let's see. Um, a couple on a holiday in the Caribbean decide to spend the day on a scuba diving trip, but was it the wrong decision? Uh, when a miscount happens on the boat, Susan and Daniel are left behind in the middle of the ocean, the boat long gone. With all their hopes set on the boat coming back to rescue them, they try to keep themselves safe, especially when sharks start to appear. Yeah, I really liked the movie. I thought it was really, really good. Yeah, yeah you, you can. It's just my mom asking if she can go by. The webcam is here, so if you go here, they you, they will see you. But you can you can go from side to side without anyone seeing you. Oh, no, mom, mom, please go. No. Hello. No. <laughs> Okay. Hello. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So I, I, I had to cover her because she wasn't dressed properly. <laughs> yes, that's why I was like, no. Hopefully, yeah. Okay. So, so sorry for that. She she has a weird sense of humor. Yeah. Yes. I get my weird dark humor from her. Uh, let's see. Peter, I've watched screenings of In the Mouth of Madness, The Initiation, uh, Dracula 80, 72, Danger, Diabolical, and lots of other cool movies. <sighs> Mom, they're wondering if you love horror movies as well. Do you love horror movies as well? They are wondering. Yes. Yes, she very, says yes. Very much. Very much, yes. But she fell asleep when we watched a Serbian film together. Unfortunately, but I've seen like all of those with her, like uh, Human Centipede, Cannibal Holocaust. But she likes, she loves movies that are like more based on a true story because she loves true crime. That is, she does the only thing she watches besides uh, football and tennis. It's true crime. Yeah, it's on here twenty four seven a day. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, Peter, you saw a lot of great, cool movies there. Yeah, I'm so jealous. Linus, <laughs> hey mom, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dennis, hey, she too loves horror, yeah. Uh, you get mommy, yes, that was mommy. <laughs> uh, Peter, and yes, I meant the ugly 1997. Yes, so I do think you should watch uh, that version uh, or that movie. Because uh, as I said, I gave the ugly 7 out of 10. That, that's a good grade. So, but I really don't remember a lot from it. But when I was reading the description, then uh, a lot of things ca came back to me. I was like, oh, I, I have definitely seen this because I recognize it. 
Uh, Dennis, you or mom watched Assault on Precinct 13? Yes, I've seen it. I don't know if my mom has uh, seen it, but uh, I have seen it. But it was a long time ago. Uh, Peter, smiley face. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's see what else I might have been watching. Peter, your mom is awesome. Yes, yeah, she is. She is. Okay. Then it's hard movie. Yeah, I don't really, really remember a lot from it, but I remember liking it. Uh, so it must have had some good moments, but I will rewatch it because I've been wanting to rewatch that movie for a while. Uh, so let's see my diary here. Okay. Did you dress? <laughs> yeah, laughing emoji. Yeah. Yes. She, she makes me laugh a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so what have I watched since the last time I did a live stream with you? Uh, of course, I'm doing my Attack of the Animals theme. So I have to rewatch a lot of, you know, uh, creature features and animal movies. So yesterday or this night, I rewatched Cujo. And I also rewatched Squirm earlier today. And I said, Peter, they showed those movies at that horror film club theater of blood. I mean, yeah, I understood that. Yeah. But that sounds really awesome. Like, uh, we had something in uh, Stockholm uh, where they showed a lot of, like, Giallo and Euro crime movies and, like, very weird, yeah, those types of movies. Uh, they had it, like, once a month, I think, and it was so good. But then they just stopped having them, even before, yeah, all of, you know, the crazy stuff happened with the world. Yeah, but that was really good. Yeah. And I also, like bought a lot of good editions. They had like 88 films, they had like Arrow. Yeah, and they had like good prices. So yeah, it's too bad. I really wish they would come back. And we used to sit in the in this like, uh, it was like a cinema, but it was like a very fancy one. You had like sofas, you had couches, there were like uh, tables. So you were, you were sitting very, you know, spaced and there was a bar on the side. So you can just go and order, you know, beer and ciders and drinks and you can order in food. It was like fancy food. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, very good. Um, Matt, we had a film club in Florence, but the place they were meeting closed down and couldn't find another one. Oh, that's too bad. I love film clubs. It's so good. You know, it's like kind of like cozy. People who love horror movies get together and you know, have a good time. So, but hopefully something will pop up again here in Stockholm like that soon. Uh, so let's see what else did I manage to watch? Not a lot. Uh, yeah. I, I saw, I went to the cinema. Uh, two days ago, but I didn't see a horror film. I saw the new Jason Statham movie, Wrath of Man, which is very good in my opinion, but not a horror movie. But yeah, I saw Cujo, rewatched Cujo and rewatched Squirm. And you know, I really hate uh, bugs and insects and maggots and stuff like that. And Squirm is all about that, like all the time. So I'm like, uh... but an enjoyable watch it, it, in a weird way. <laughs> But Cujo, I, I was glad that I rewatched the movie because I barely remembered anything besides that dog being crazy. But uh, I will uh, review those two later this month. Yeah. And I'm planning on uh, recording uh, new videos after this live stream. So I will see if I have the time to put up a video for today. So we'll see. But tomorrow, definitely. Uh, Peter, Matt Jordan, yeah, finding places is hard a lot of the time. That film club I go to had to move to a smaller place, and it's not as good to screen films at the new place at all. Carl, the Faces of Death films touch on true stories. Yeah, I've heard about Faces of Death, haven't seen it. It's just, I heard like they're, they're having scenes where they show like people who have actually uh, died or hurt themselves or something like that. 
Now, I haven't seen the film, so I can't say if that is true or not. But if you've seen it, Carl, is that true? Because if it is true, then that is probably why I've stayed away from it. Peter, yeah, film clubs are very nice. Yeah, it's such a nice community. Mm, yeah. But yeah, okay, so <laughs> I've been talking for almost an hour and 15 minutes. So I will give this maybe one or two more minutes. So if you have any closing comments or final questions, just shoot. Uh, Matt Jordan, I have seen the films, but I don't think it's true. Okay. Yeah, hopefully not, because I've heard that they have a mix. Like that they, some some of it are like true stuff, some of it are not, and some are other things. But as, as I said, I haven't seen it, so I can't really comment on it. But if, if nothing in it is true, or they show like real stuff, then I, 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 I can watch it. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay away from real deaths and stuff in, in movies at least. Yeah. But it's funny because uh, when I research like true crime, then I have no problem like watching like uh, crime scene photos of like bodies and stuff. It, I mean, it's not fun or anything. Like it's just okay. I I can't watch it. But when it comes in movies and stuff like that, I'm like I'd rather not watch something that is completely true. Yeah. Uh, then is you like noir? Yeah, noir movies are good. I I really like them. Yeah, I like uh, how they are being told mostly they start with the end and then they just uh, show you how everything led to that end scene which was the first scene <laughs> matured on those and bum fights were the 90s edgy teen startup pack yeah bum fights i know that's true that's horror like that that's just i <laughs> i don't want to watch that because it just sounds like very very sad and very just horrifying like, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, <clears throat> okay. So thank you everyone for joining me. I'm so happy to have you as part of my horror fab community, of course. But yeah, I hope you had an enjoyable live stream and I will see you next time. I don't know exactly when that will be, but ah, I will let you know, of course. So bye.